sisters, there is nothing worth dying for. I've seen kings go. The greatest kings, the greatest noble men that the world has ever produced, they have gone. They left with nothing. Nothing. They left with nothing. Everything was here. And they left them and go. Let nothing come in between you and the service of God. And because one day we will all appear before him. That's why I'm taking that confession. So let's take that confession better. Put your hands on your chest. I got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Roman chapter 3 verse 23 I will dwell today on sin the Bible said in Roman chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God the Bible said all sinned and have fallen short of his glory all The word sin appeared the first time in the Bible. And it appeared, it began in the Garden of Eden. When man disobeyed God's order and God's instruction. That was where it began. Now listen to me. Let me have your attention. Disobedience was the first sin committed by man and it was recorded to man as being has committed sin when an instructions was given man went against the order of god and sin reigned and everything that will come through man became corrupted and the Bible said, all have seen and come short of his glory. Sometimes we ask ourselves, what are the challenges that keep us where we are? But I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, the most times, most of the challenges that we are having is because of not taking instructions. Every man, every man, you know, limited himself to the level where he is. As a matter of fact, look at me. You are living in the consequences of your actions yesterday. The acts, the deeds of yesterday are the realities that is what is playing today. That's why God will not be blamed for any man's failure. You are responsible for your failure. And you will be responsible for what will happen in the future. So where you are today is the consequences that you are going through of yesterday. The instructions you refuse to take. The, uh, the advice that you refuse to take. And then as you are growing now, it's, you are now living in the reality of it. And it looks as if somebody was after you. No. Nobody is after you. But because you refuse to take instructions. That is why you are where you are today. Nobody brought you into the mess that you, you are in. You willingly brought in yourself. There is no thing. There is no sin without a consequence. Are you hearing me? No sin without consequence. Without consequence. Your little display of you know, disobedience in your family is as a result of where you are today. So 
some of us are suffering today and will suffer tomorrow because of disobedience. The Bible said God drove man away from the Garden of Eden just because he refused to adhere to instruction, disobedience. The Bible said Romans chapter 6 verse 23 For the wages of sin is death but the gifts of God is eternal in Christ Jesus. The wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. The wages of sin is death. Now, when he talks about death, you cannot be exonerated because there are two kinds of death. One is the physical death and two is spiritual death. And most people who live on earth die spiritually. And that's why they cannot assess their inheritance because sin will not allow you to assess your inheritance. What sin does is that it takes away your, it, you know, it closes a door against you. Sin closes a door against a man. That's what happened in the realm of the spirit because the men and women that we interact in the realm of the spirit are holier. Hallelujah. So the consequences is that when a man sin, he dies. So a lot of people are working because they are gone. They are just mainly surviving. But they are no more. Genesis 4, 4 verse to 7. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portion, from some of his firstborn of his flock and the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering I wish we have a time to dwell in this now the Bible said he brought and Abel brought also an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock some of the firstborn of his flock what does that mean he brought in the first of that which the Lord has given to him. The first, some of the firstborn. It means that the first thing that God gave to him, he brought it to him as a sacrifice. Now, this is the reason why Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Many of us as Christians bring sin sacrifice that is not accepted. That your offering was not returned back to you mean doesn't mean that it was accepted. Did you hear me? That your offering did not return back to you. The pastor did not pay it back to you. Does not mean that it was accepted. Because you brought it without a good heart. You brought it with the heart of Cain. You offered to God an unholy sacrifice. Because you felt that he has done something that you are not happy with. As a matter of fact, many of us are not happy with God. That's why I like that song. See what the Lord has done. What we prayed for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What we asked for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What we cried for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. What we prayed for have come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Abel's offering was accepted because 
what he brought to God was, you know, pleasantly. The Bible recorded that he brought some of the firstborn. Firstborn. Now, because he, he keeps the sheep, so he brought the firstborn, the first things that God gave to him. Now, see what the Lord has done in your life. How often have you come to give him thanks in what he has done? Some of us are, are playing over God's intelligence. You think you're, 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 you're stingy. That money that you refuse to pay tight on, has it not finished? That money you refuse to give your special seat, has it not gone? Hello? Has it not finished? He has finished. And yet you are asking for more. Or maybe somebody at the social media has told you that ah, if you do, if you give, you're giving to the party. No. If you must go up in life, one of the things that you must do, otherwise you remain perpetually poor and a beggar. You know, some things are hard to say, but we need to tell ourselves the truth. Hallelujah. The moment you cannot bring a quality offering to God, there is no headway for you. So let the Bible say, Whatsoever a man sow, he shall reap. Be not be deceived. Now, you look at the man who is collecting it, but that's not your business. Your business is the one who you are giving to. That's why in my life today, there is absolutely nothing that I can't give out. There is nothing. That thing is not born. Absolutely. Hi, look at me. There is no blessing without a sacrifice. No free blessing anywhere. Any man who tells you there is a place you will get to, you will get a free blessing without a sacrifice, is a big lie. We are standing today serving God, having access to the Holy of Holy, because somebody paid a price that with his own blood. The Bible said, I sought for a man who will go. For several years, man, and the Bible said, when man sin, he dies. Every man that sin dies. Then Jesus came and became a mediator. That's why he said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus. And so God is no longer looking at us. He looked at Jesus. If God is to look at us on how we are, no man will live to this day. Praise the Lord. So one of the things you must learn as we are moving into the next phase of our life is to be able to offer to God the one who created you. If God is indeed the one that created you, you must offer him your best. You must look for your best and give to him at all times. The Bible said the man gave his, the firstborn of his seeds, the first things, the best of his money, the best of his creatures, the best thing that he had, he gave it to God. He didn't give it. And that was why God, the Bible said God was pleased with him. God does not beg anybody for money. But these are principles that have been there before the foundations of this world. And then if you like tapping it, there is no, listen, you cannot be smarter than the scriptures. Are you hearing me? You cannot be cannot be smarter. Now, what, another thing that we do that will haunt us in the future is our service with God. How faithful we are in our service with God. How faithful. What effort are you making? To remain a faithful steward. You must be approved. The Bible says you must be approved. And certified a good steward. Before you can obtain some certain kind of blessing. There are certain kind of blessings that you will not enjoy. Until you have been approved. Qualified to accept that blessing. Otherwise you can't accept them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
you hear me say often if you want to serve God listen serve him better we sang this morning I want to see Jesus Sunday are you living your life like a man who wished to see Jesus Sunday but then if you're not living your life like the one who wants to see Jesus you are wasting your time so whatever you want to do serve him well so the Bible said Cain Cain also brought his own offering but he couldn't find favor before God the Bible said he was angry like many of us are angry that our prayers are not answered or God has not responded to us and how do we show our anger number one by not coming to church that's why we are not in church we want to come to church when we have so much money with us we want to come to church where we will not feel pain coming to church. That's how we show anger to God. That's how we are displeased. That's how we show it. Nobody cares for me. Nobody asks after me. These are displays of not being grateful to what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that was what happened to Cain. And sin beget sin. The moment anger came, the next thing he thought was to kill his brother. That was the next thing he thought. Jealousy came. And then he was now looking for a way to do away with his brother. And why did he do away with his brother? Because he felt that God refused to answer him. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21. Now, I want to explain some things with this scripture. The Bible says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impunity. Now, he's talking about the acts of the flesh. Now, one of the things that can stop a man from not moving forward is immoral arts. Every man, hold your ear. Hold your ear. Hold your ear. Immorality is spiritual did you hear what i said is spiritual and is one of the things that can hinder your progress any man who indulges in it listen he can go up he will definitely come down that man will come down the covenant you have as a christian is different from a covenant a sinner someone who have not found christ have so you and someone who is not born again are not operating in the same covenant and i need you to understand this that they, you could say ah, they are doing it and they are getting away no because there is no watch and their life can be plugged out at any time because they are already in the camp of the enemy but when you are in the camp of God, there are things that are forbidden, that are, it should be at war, that you should not indulge yourself in. And one of them is immoral arts. I don't idolatry or immorality. These are the things that you must do everything possible to get yourself away from it. Because if you indulge yourself in it, you will be limited in this life. Hallelujah. Not only will he close doors against you in life, it will also make you to go to hell. Praise God. For no one that dwells in it that excels successfully. 1 John 1, 8 to 10. Very fast.
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10. If we say that we have we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Hallelujah. You see, the worst thing that can happen to a man is when you are deceiving yourself. You know you have a particular lifestyle as a Christian that you are living and then you consistently you keep being on it. You know, You keep at it. That's the worst thing that can happen to you as a man. The worst thing that can happen to you is the ability of not being able to discipline yourself. The Bible said, if we claim that we have no sin in us, we deceive ourselves. And you know that what you are doing is wrong. And then you keep doing it. You keep being at it. You know that you are not living to expectation. And then you keep being at it. You know that you are not honest. And you are keep at it. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says if we confess our sin. That's why the Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. Sometimes you need to be rebuked publicly. So that some of those habits can disappear from your life. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible said. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Sin is not corrected in the secret place. And that's why there is no correction that is taking place in the secret that has worked. Sin. The best way to deal with sin is to expose it. Can I hear a man? The best way to deal with sin is to expose it. If you don't expose it, the Bible says, says if you confess it, it said, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purifies us from all unrighteousness. So confession, confession is not in the secret. Confession is done publicly. And so, and that's what God expects us to do. So when we confess it, the devil will run away. See, most times, the reason why we have not moved on is because we are still trying to muzzle it in ourselves. Mark chapter 7, verse 20 to 23. He went on. What comes out of a person is what defies them. What comes out of a person is what defies them. You talk rudely. That's the moment you begin to talk words that are not godly. That shows how dirty you are in the realm of the spirit. Those devilish words that has been stored in your heart. That you are looking for the day you will be angry with somebody. Or you will fight somebody. And then you begin to pour them out. This shows how dirty and ugly you are. Now the beauty of a man is the words that comes out of him. Did you hear me? What beautifies you. Is the words. Things that comes out of you. Will show how beautiful you are. Or how ugly you are. Beauty is not in the face. Beauty is in what comes out of a man. A woman can be very pretty, but very ugly. Nobody will want to get close to him, to her, sorry. Why? Because of the things that comes out from her. So the beauty of a man is the world. That's why the Bible says, let your worlds be seasoned with salt. At all time, every word that will come out of your mouth will taste like a salt. It is no words that will kill a man or will destroy people. And some of our women will talk, we talk down, and the you know dehumanize men and women with our words. What defies a man is what comes out of him. What defies you is what comes out of you. The 
quality of a man is what he produced. The values of a man is what comes out of him. What comes out of you is your value. That is how men will rate you. What produce? You know, when I want to know your level, when I sit down to discuss with you, I will be able to know who you are as a person. 